Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, make head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take a few minutes to understand ourselves, how this practice will help and from where this come and how it is start. So when it comes to world, as you know, that we're living in a marketing world. In this marketing world, everything is a business. And no one can escape from that. When we look at our human history, even during the Buddha's time, the same. One of the biggest business was rebirth business. That's mean karma. Oh, you're going to you're going to born again, and because of that, you have to do this, that, that, like that. And it was the karma is a big business. And other thing is the yoga. And you know it's it's a big business. It's nothing to do with the spiritual yoga anymore and the self, and even the, the suffering. And the suffering, the world itself is a business. Even the nirvana is a business. How many nightclubs now? And the name is nirvana. How many hotels? The name is nirvana, you know? And when you go there and you use all the high, uh, that high drugs, and you lose your mind and people believe it's kind of like a, you know new experience something is uh, to achieve to something like that. so it became a business and the meditation it also a business so in this business world finding what the buddha taught is very important because during Buddha's time, the same. It's not, it's not different than today. During Buddha's time, the same situation. There were many, many religions, patterns, social behaviors, and used to follow and hold people as groups and as communities, as Sangha. And always they were trying to keep them around it. And it's kind of like the, the followers, collecting followers. So then how it happened, 
the people used to believe this world created by God. And then actually these innocent people thought to please the God. And that is how all the puja came or the offering came because they want to do something. They want to please the God and to get something better to shape the, the world according to the, the we want. There's nothing wrong with that. So then they start to give something to the, the God. And when they're going to give something to the God, that's ordinary people didn't know anything. So then they, they need a middle man. And that is where all the, the priests start to play the role. And uh, that is where the businesses start. So now you have to please the middleman also to get the something, get something better from the God. And so the middleman, what happened? Forget about the God. Now people start to come towards them and they start to, to manipulate the people and keep them under their authority, and that is where the hierarchy start with this all the religious factories. And then they develop their code, things according to their opinions. It's not that, even though we talk today like that, you know, it was not the kind of like ugly. It was a pattern, it, it how it happened. This is, this is, we can't justify it as a right or wrong. That is, that is what, available and it happened as a you know, result of continuation. That's the thing. But we have to understand how, how that the, it, it came to the world. So then during that time, the, the Buddha came to the world and the Buddha, what the Buddha understood, Buddha understood how to get out of the suffering. If you want to get out of the suffering, you have to understand the reality. So that was the Buddha's part. So then what the Buddha did? Buddha gave the tools to people rather than go with the God or rather than go with the priest or the middleman or rather than going, believing, following something. Buddha gave the tools to people to find the the reality the, or the truth within themselves to get out of the suffering. Why? Because even the God can't help for people to get out of the suffering. Why? Because in a certain way, God also suffering to keep, keep maintain themselves. Any God doesn't like if another God come and take overtake their, their place. And when it comes to that uh, subject, you know, there are many historical uh, stories that the God has, uh, you know, war. It's just not uh, in the human world. That the, the God also sometimes come to the war when they, you know, losing their powers. That's the very nature. So somehow, get out of the suffering is the main theme when it comes to the Buddha's teaching. So how you can do that? So for that, you have to understand the reality. What is here reality means? Reality means what is true and what is exactly exist. So then when it comes to that, you can't go to the past or the future. Then the reality is what you experience right now, right here. So that is the beginning point. When it comes to the world, there are two kinds of ways. Dharma behave. So the dharma means one thing is that uh, what you hold, what you, your defining character, what, what you hold as who you are. And uh, another thing is the dharma is the law. 
And uh, maybe the Western world, maybe you more familiar with the law, law of attraction, law of nature, or kind of like that. So that all came out of, there are two major behaviors in our life. One is pattern maintainer, and another one is the pattern, patterns transcender. So the pattern maintainers out of the law, duty, religion, culture, tradition, pattern. So all this pattern maintainer, it is a different kind. It is a kind of like a life. It's a conventional life, give you more comfort. Settle down, maintain. So life itself a pattern and what we does just keep maintaining. That is what we call life. And uh, when it comes to that, when you keep maintaining the life, you feel comfortable and other people feel comfortable and everybody cherish and everybody appreciate. So like that. But what the Buddha taught so that is a, that also kind of like the dharma. Because the law, when it comes to another way, some people explain dharma as law. So the law means the pattern. So when you maintain the pattern, that means you in the dharma. So that is a one way of explain, explanation. Because when in Hindi language, that dharma means law. So if you say, don't break the dharma, that means don't break the law. Law means this, uh, the whatever the law in the book, the high court, uh, so the, this conventional law. But when it comes to that, Buddhism, the law is totally different. Try to try to clarify yourself from today. What is the what is the Buddha said as the law? So the very purpose of the, the Buddha's teaching, understand the reality to get out of the suffering. So that is what the purpose and get out of the suffering is the, the, the final destination or the, the purpose. So when you hold it to that purpose, it becomes your dharma. So then it, that when it comes to the Buddha's teaching, dharma means the method that you use yourself to get uh, to re recognize the reality and to get out of the, the suffering, out of that recognition. And uh, when it comes to that, that pattern transcending, so the whatever you practice, it should take you from this level to more, better, higher level. That's the transcending. You use the pattern not to maintain, not to settle down, not to find your comfort. You use something to become more better. Go beyond this level. So then you have to come to the point to understand that whatever you do in day-to-day -day life, behalf of that your religious practice, is it try to take you to a more better, higher level or are you just keep maintaining, maintaining, maintaining? You are the same. Maybe you keep doing everything the same, even the meditation. But there is, if there is no inner progress, if there is no inner development, then it doesn't work 
as the dharma related to the Buddha's teaching. It may be become a dharma according to some other teachings. So when then when you say you follow the dharma, that means you follow very method to transcend. So when it comes to that, what the method that you use as a pattern? And it is a very grounded practical method that Buddha gave as a tool. So that is the critical analytical observation. That should be your dharma. That is the method. Because critical analytical observation will take you to understand what is reality. And once you are capable to understand the reality, and that understanding will take you out of the suffering. And it need to do by yourself, by your own mind, by practicing yourself. There is no middleman. So now you can see from the history how it start to go in a different way. And now you understand why people hate the Buddha's teaching. Because it's not going to help you to maintain the patterns. It always take you to the point to break the pattern. So the break the pattern means that's your, your behavior. That's it. So when you be when you break your behavior, what happens? It affects for the culture, tradition, the society, the law, and everything. And then in a larger scale, if everybody starts to, to go in that way, what will happen? There is no maintainer, the pattern maintainer. Everybody start to develop themselves. But the business world doesn't like it because it affects the marketing world. Then what will happen? They will do anything to, to stop it. That's how it is. No? But somehow it is your responsibility to, to get into that authentic very classical way of practice. So what is that? Critical analytical observation. And recognize the reality. So when it comes to that point, reality, you can't, as I mentioned, you can't get the reality from the past or the future experience. Reality is what you experience right now, right here. That is real. So that's why in the four foundations, it's go with the contemplating the body, contemplating the sensation, contemplating the mind, contemplating the phenomena. And basically with our practice, we contemplate our own inhalation, exhalation. So when you recognize the sensation, so that is the only real thing in the moment for you. So other everything become ideas, concept. So through the concept, you can't catch the reality. That's, that is something. This, this two doesn't go together. The concept, ideas, good for thoughts, good for mind to think not to experience ideas you can't experience i can ideas you can trans the kind of like communicate but you can't experience the thing is that when it come to i experience you have to drop the ideas which a lot of people don't like because we hold it to ideas even when it come to practice we just repeating ideas thoughts, hold it to thoughts rather than dropping it. So once the mind hold it to ideas, you can't catch the reality. You can't see what is happening right now, right here. Because mind block itself by its own ideas. 
So then what you need to do, when you come to primary mental object to observe it, don't think about it. Now you need to know the, the very hindrance come out of our own mind when we try to observe something. Because maybe outside everything silence, that everything perfect for you. But still once you close your eyes, your own thoughts start, start to disturb. So that is why you have to bring a determination and understanding yourself not to bring your thoughts and not to verbalize your experience. Because once you try to verbalize your experience, what happens, again it becomes concept, thoughts. Once it becomes a thought, again it disappears from the experience. So then moment by moment experience. So now you have to remember Rather than go with the thoughts, rather than go with the concept, rather than hold it to ideas, when you're capable to go with the moment by moment, moment by moment experience, what happened by the time, the duration to being with the experience going to become longer, expand. And once the mind capable to expand that duration, your, the recognition level, your understanding about the reality also going to become more, more, more deeper. You can go more deeper. So these two things. And on the surface level, when you're capable to have the, when you contemplate and when you settle down, when you have the, the undisturbed mind and deeply connected to the, the moment. And if you are capable to expand the duration, expand the duration, and as a result of that, what happened, the depth that you can see going to become more, more deeper, deeper, deeper. So then it is important to to get into this duration, it's another way called the flow. But just on the flow doesn't mean it's going to work because you have to go in into also deeper. So that is where the critical analytical method is important. So that is what we call the vipassana. In the tranquility meditation, you tranquilize the mind. That means you are capable to your awareness settle down with the primary mental object and keep continue with it and expand the duration. And the Vipassana will help you to, while expanding the duration and you go deeper with the experience. So when you go with the deeper experience in the moment, what happens? You're capable to recognize as sensation, as thoughts, as feelings, as the posture, as mind. So whatever, the, according to your primary mental object, whatever the perception happen in you, you are capable to recognize the, the very depth of it. So when you see that, you see from where this comes. And that is where you're capable to see with each and every experience, there is a mental formation, there is a sanskara. So the sanskara or the mental formations, what happened when the perception arise, when something come to you in the moment as experience, what happened, the perception or the, 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 the sanskara, mental formations, it twist inside or rather than allowing it to happen naturally, it come and overtake and twist it to something. So then deeply that what you understand may be not what you experience. That's where understanding and experience become different. But our point of view come as a result of our deeper understanding. So not 
out of what we experience on the surface level as perception. But the important thing is our point of view. So then by the time what happened, you little by little, little by little, you drop the pattern of the, the sanskar or the mental formations, influence, and then you become free. And the, when the perception arises with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, you are capable to recognize it as it is. That is the, the method of tranquility meditation. Recognize things as it is. But that's not enough. Recognizing something as it is. Not going to take you to wisdom. You will recognize something as it is. Then what happened? It's going to be there and you again something happened. You recognize it as it is. There's nothing else. But how it helps you to transcend rather than becoming a pattern. When it comes to analytical, critical observation, what happens? That when you recognize something as it is, deeply you're going to recognize how it came to be as it is. And that is a totally different mechanism. Just imagine, recognizing something as it is and recognizing something how it came to be as it is. Totally different. So the Vipassana, we need this both method. In the beginning, we have to settle down with our own perception and then deeply you can recognize how it happened and how it come to be as it is. Once you have that wisdom, in the moment by moment, moment by moment, that wisdom will uplift your point of view. And then when once your point of view change, you're not going to be anymore the same person. That is how the pattern transcend. You use a certain pattern to transcend yourself. And once you come to understand that the reality and through that way, you change your point of view. It, it just, when you experience it, it happens because it irreversible. It cannot go backward and become the same person after meditation. It becomes somebody else. So day by day, day by day, this progress happened. So maybe in the beginning, you don't see it. No, but still you have to keep, keep practice, keep practice. It's kind of like that Chinese bamboo tree, you know, when you plant that root or the seed, five years you have to maintain putting water and protecting it and providing necessary facilities, soil. Five years, no any result. So by the time, suddenly, within few weeks, it is after five years, within few weeks, it start to go more than 60, 60 feet high. See, it's like that. And when you continue, when you continue, by the time you are capable to expand the capacity of settling down, that is important. And then bring the critical analytical mind and observe deeply. And by the time the depth become more, more, more deeper. And when you are capable to combine this together, by the time out of your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, perception, rather than depending from the past or the future, in, in that very moment, you recognize how things come to be as they are. And that recognition is kind of like a big bang, you know. Anymore, you can't collect that things and put it to that one thing. So anymore, your mind not going to, to belong to this maintaining patterns method. So you get out of that. And then by the time, once you come to the 
the final destination and that is the place that you experience the the depth of the the panya the, the it's the, the it's, it's the, there's a word called panya pratnya so it's kind of like the super the pra means super nya means no it's a kind of like a super no it's a super intelligence it's a super intelligence means super means it's a, that is the the highest and deeply the reality that you know something to the depth that is what happened and when it comes to that moment that is the highest you can achieve as a human being and that is where you find your liberation transformation ultimate bliss of nibbana so with that let's get into practice a little bit so your right palm on your left and they get straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes three times and say Supatveva, oh may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. And deeply and gently breathing, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. and allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. When it happens, through the sensation of it, recognize inhalation as inhalations, exhalations as exhalations. Do nothing extra.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so are pray low strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. to your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. to all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive this merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodantu sabba sampati siddhiya sabbe bhuta numodantu sabba sampati siddhiya sabbe satta numodantu sabba sampati siddhiya Maya Dhamma Nu Dhamma Patipatiya Buddham Pujemi Dhamman Pujemi Sangham Pujemi Adaya Imaya Patipatiya Jati Jaraviya Dinaranam Ha Paribunjisami Idam me punya kamanga zavakaya van hotu sabaduka bamunjatu. Blessing.